Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Whispers followed Harry from the moment he left his dormitory the next day. Harry wished they wouldn't because he was trying to concentrate on finding his way to classes. The people in portraits kept going to visit each other and Harry was sure the coats of armor could walk. Harry and Ron managed to get on the wrong side of him on their very first morning. There was a lot more to magic, as Harry quickly found out, than waving your wand and saying a few funny words. At the start of their first lesson, he took the register, and when he reached Harry's name, he gave an excited squeak and toppled out of sight. Harry had been quite right to think she wasn't a teacher to cross. Harry was very relieved to find out that he wasn't miles behind everyone else. Friday was an important day for Harry and Ron. What have we got today, Harry asked Ron as he poured sugar on his porridge. Wish McGonagall favored us, said Harry. Harry had got used to this by now, but it had given him a bit of a shock on the first morning when about a hundred owls had suddenly streamed into the great hall during breakfast, circling the tables until they saw their owners and dropping letters and packages onto their laps. Hedwig hadn't brought Harry anything so far. This morning, however, she fluttered down between the marmalade and the sugar bowl and dropped a note onto Harry's plate. Harry tore it open at once. Dear Harry, it said in a very untidy scrawl, I know you get Friday afternoons off, so would you like to come and have a cup of tea with me around three? Harry borrowed Ron's quill, scribbled, yes please, see you later, on the back of the note and sent Hedwig off again. It was lucky that Harry had tea with Hagrid to look forward to, because the potions lesson turned out to be the worst thing that had happened to him so far. At the start of term banquet, Harry had got the idea that Professor Snape disliked him. Snape didn't dislike Harry. He hated him. Snape, like Flitwick, started the class by taking the register, and like Flitwick, he paused at Harry's name. Ah, yes, he said softly. Harry Potter. Harry and Ron exchanged looks with raised eyebrows. Harry glanced at Ron, who looked as stumped as he was. Hermione's hand shot into the air. I don't know, sir, said Harry. Hermione stretched her hand as high into the air as it would go without her leaving her seat, but Harry didn't have the faintest idea what a bazaar was. Harry forced himself to keep looking straight into those cold eyes. I don't know, said Harry quietly. A few people laughed. Harry caught Seamus' eye, and Seamus winked. Then he rounded on Harry and Ron, who had been working next to Neville. That was so unfair that Harry opened his mouth to argue, but Ron kicked him behind their cauldron. As they climbed the steps out of the dungeon an hour later, Harry's mind was racing, and his spirits were low. When Harry knocked, they heard a frantic scrabbling from inside and several booming barks. This is Ron, Harry told Hagrid, who was pouring boiling water into a large teapot and putting rock cakes onto a plate. The rock cakes almost broke their teeth, but Harry and Ron pretended to be enjoying them as they told Hagrid all about their first lessons. Fang rested his head on Harry's knee and drooled all over his robes. Harry and Ron were delighted to hear Hagrid call Filch that old jit. Harry told Hagrid about Snape's lesson. Hagrid, like Ron, told Harry not to worry about it, that Snape liked hardly any of the students. Yet Harry couldn't help thinking that Hagrid didn't quite meet his eyes when he said that. Harry wondered if Hagrid had changed the subject on purpose. While Ron told Hagrid all about Charlie's work with dragons, Harry picked up a piece of paper that was lying on the table under the tea cozy. Harry remembered Ron telling him on the train that someone had tried to rob Gringotts, but Ron hadn't mentioned the date. Hagrid, said Harry. There was no doubt about it. Hagrid definitely didn't meet Harry's eyes this time. Harry read the story again. As Harry and Ron walked back to the castle for dinner, their pockets weighed down with rock cakes they'd been too polite to refuse, Harry thought that none of the lessons he'd had so far had given him as much to think about as tea with Hagrid. And did Hagrid know something about Snape that he didn't want to tell Harry?